Good afternoon, everyone. It's really my great pleasure to present my PhD work today. Um, I would like to start the talk with a brief introduction of interventional imaging and image um, guidance to give you a bit of background on image registration. Here's a picture of uh, extra, uh, uh, interventional C arm. And this is firstly an X-ray machine with an X-ray detector and a source and detector mounted on the two ends of the C-shaped arm. And usually the patient is placed in between of source and detector and under continuous uh, X-ray uh, fluoroscopy, the doctors can navigate their devices, endovascular devices, using uh, in, uh, these images in real time. And it's a standard routine for endovascular interventions, but some t uh, it's, it has certain limitations. So firstly, the vascular structures have very bad contrast in the X-ray images, and the, the, they are only visible when the contrast material is injected. And secondly, there's no depth information in such uh, X-ray images, and uh, sometimes it can be quite critical for complex use cases. And for, to accommodate such uh, limitations, we can use 2D, 3D image fusion um, to uh, augment X-ray fluoroscopy with an overlay, overlay 3D volume. And during, if during the X-ray imaging, we have a 3D volume of the patient, and what we can do is we can virtually place this volume to the patient position and render this volume as imaged from the exit source to the detector. And now by adding these two images, we have a fused view of both 2D and 3D images. And from a, from a technical perspective and for image reg registration, there are two uh, main if, uh, factors uh, to consider, namely the visualization and accuracy. Visualization is about how to pre represent information from both 2D and 3D images. And accuracy is about the spatial alignment between the 3D and 2D images. And it leads to the topic of image registration. And in this talk, I'm going to focus on the 2D, 3D registration, namely by applying uh, 3D rotation translations to, to the 3D image such that uh, the both uh, the project, uh, this 3D image and 2D image are uh, accurately aligned. And this registration workflow uh, consists basically two parts. So before the interventional procedure starts, this 3D volume has to be brought to the imaging as a pro projection geometry um, according to the patient position. And this is performed, as, this is done by uh, initial registration. Um, so now before the, uh, before the procedure, the, the images are well aligned, but during the procedure, if there's a patient motion, and this patient motion causes misalignment in the fused view, and, and there we, we need to apply a motion compensation to transform the 3D image accordingly, such that uh, the fused view is, again, accurate. Of course, before I started to work on this topic, there's, um, there was already a lot of uh, work having been published uh, in, the, in this field. And there's a very nice re review article summarizing the 2D, 3D registration methods. And for rigid 2D, 3D registration, you can categorize the methods first, um, according, for, for example, according to the dimensionality. And there we, we have projection-based, back projection-based, and reconstruction-based met methods. And for, we, we can also categorize the methods, uh, the registration methods using according to the registration basis for the similarity measure. So there are then uh, feature-based, intensity-based, and gradient-based. And among all these um, methods, the registration problem is, um, is usually solved as the optimal search um, on the similarity function S defined on the parameter space. And uh, because of the high non-convexity of the optimization problem, and that makes the optimal search very tricky. And besides that, for interventional applications, there are also special challenges. And firstly, during the intervention, time is a very critical factor. And that means if we have a registration algorithm that delivers very reliable results, but if it takes minutes to calculate, the doctors cannot really uh, benefit from it. Secondly, content mismatches can be introduced from the interventional um, 
de uh, devices such as such as capacitors or, or guide wires, or um, introduced by contrast uh, material injection, and that challenges uh, the robustness of the registration algorithm um, a lot. And thirdly, a single view guidance is very uh, commonly used in the in the practice. It releases less dose, and a uh, single single view uh, system takes also less space, but. 2D, 3D Im image registration using single view images is more, far more challenging than simultaneously using multiple images from different viewing directions. And all these challenges motivates me to research the 2D, 3D registration uh, from a different perspective, and that leads <coughs> to my original contribution to, the, to this field. At the beginning, I, instead of solving, I tried to solve the 2D, 3D registration problem, Instead, I assume that an accurate in initial alignment is given, and there I can recover the depth information of the 2D features from the fused 3D image, and using that, I can directly uh, um, estimate the 3D, f 3D motion out of the 2D tracking. And then I propose a point to plane correspondence model for differential mo motion compensation, uh, where the uh, the 3D motion is effect, uh, very efficiently constrained, constrained by using 2D tracking. And I extended this P PPC model as a dynamic 2D, 3D registration that allows us to have a very accurate initial uh, registration as well as a uh, real-time uh, capable motion compensation. <coughs> so due to time limit, I'm going to skip, skip the first part and go directly to the differential tracking. Um, for motion compensation where the point and plane correspondence model is introduced. To motivate this part, I would like to, to start with the relationship between image gradient and differential motion. So here we see an image, an X-ray image. Um, its gradient magnitude looks like that. And if the, there's some small motion uh, during the X-ray imaging, it, it causes such an intensity difference between, the different, between neighboring frames. And somehow these two images are related. And this relationship is, can be uh, de described by the optical flow constraint equation in computer vision, um, saying that the flow vector at the image position u and v is, related, is constrained by the image gradient and the intensity change. But such uh, optical flow uh, constraint uh, suffers from a perturb problem when estimating global motion. I think you have might have seen such an effect as was look at this, looking at this place with moving straight lines, the movement looks exactly the same. But if now we uncover a bit more structures and we see we can identi uh, the directly and it identify the difference of uh, among the mo movements, that that tells us that observation sometimes doesn't uh, is not a real motion, and this is actually exactly what the, cons the constraint equation does. So it tells us that the intensity difference, this is our observation, this is the observation along the image gradient. And of course, if we want to know the real motion, we of course we have to consider the unobservable motion that is perpendicular to the image gradient. And this is only a 2D case, and uh, I will follow this exactly this principle to introduce you the point to plane correspondence model that solves the 3D motion estimation out of 2D. To begin with the PPC uh, model, I would like to start with the CRM projection geometry. So the CRM system can be modeled as a pinhole camera like this, and its principal ray direction is perpendicular to the de detector plane. And now if we place the 3D patient, uh, now the 3D patient, if we place the patient in the CRM projection geometry, we can say that a 3D point W is projected or images at, as a 2D, uh, 2D point X. And to give you a better understanding of 2D, 3D relationship, I back project the scene image plane as a plane in 3D space. And this plane has a normalized distance to the camera origin. And th this plane is also perpendicular to the principal ray direction. And now we have the 3D point and this uh, normalized, uh, I call this plane as normalized projection plane. And we have the 3D point and this normalized, normalized projection point P, both in 3D space. And now I simplify this 
uh, uh, sketch using the 3D uh, only a simple 3D shape, shape and its uh, normalized projection. Now we have a 3D point W. It's sliding on the surface of the uh, of the shape, and it has its uh, n normal or saying the 3D gradient perpendicular to the viewing direction. And such points we call it as apparent contour points because they are usually in imaged as an edge or contour in the 2D X-ray image. And if now the 3D, mo a 3D object moves or the patient moves, and it, the motion is actually caused by a 3D uh, rigid motion including both rotation and translation. And this global motion is locally observed as a kind of translation at locally at W as DW and it's moved to the, the 3D point to W prime. And on the projection image plane we see also this motion um, DP moves the pro projection P to P prime. So most intuitively we will say that the P prime is still the projection of W prime. So if this is true, then we can solve this motion estimation problem as a standard perspective endpoint problem in the computer vision. But note that here we have an edge. And the local 3D motion is actually only an observation that is along the image gradient, or saying perpendicular to the, to the edge. And this is not a real motion, that's why this projection relationship is not valid anymore. And then we have to uh, think about how to the, the motion constraint, including the unobservable, unobservable directions. And now I formulate the, uh, the first unobserv unobservable direction as the, pr the product, product, uh, cross product of the 3D vector W and the 3D gradient G. And that pr this pr cross product gave us a three uh, gave us gave us a vector that is perpendicular to this 3D gradient, and if we look at this vector on the normalized projection plane, it's exactly the the vector that is along the edge. That means any um, motion that is along this edge will be uh, along this direction will be projected uh, along the edge, and we cannot observe it. And the second of uh, unobservable direction is uh, I define as P prime. This is a viewing direction after apply the observation on P prime, and it means that this is uh, viewing is along the viewing ray. If we see here on the projection plane, is exactly a vector pointing out of the image and um, in depth. That means any motion in depth can also not be observed. And now c under this consideration, we can make build a linear span of these two directions. And this linear span gives us a 3D plane. And uh, this plane is, uh, has its normal defined by a cross product of these two unobserv unobservable motions. And per definition, it, there's also DP. Uh, so it means uh, the plane incorporates both the 2D observation as well as the 3D unobservable motion. And instead of, say, uh, instead of exactly saying, where the W prime is lying, we can uh, only constrain that the point is on a plane. And this gives us a point on plane equation. However, this uh, constraint is only applicable for this local, local uh, motion, DW. And what we are actually interested in is this global motion rotate as this. And that's why we have to find out the relationship between the local motion and the 3D motion such that we can apply this constraint to the global motion. So let's look at this global uh, motion. So now we are talking about differential motion and we represent this rotation and translation as a uh, rotation vector d omega and translation vector dv. And we can also represent the ro rotation using, the ro uh, uh, using a rotation axis and rotation angle and we can formulate it as uh, from the dif a rotation vector like this. And per definition, we can also write down the rotation matrix from the axis angle uh, the, um, representation like this. S um, now, actually, we have a small, under this small motion uh, assumption, we can say that cosine uh, theta is approaches to one. And this leave, we can leave out these two terms. And cosine theta is approaches to theta. Now, we can simplify this rotation, differential rotation matrix at like this. 
and apply a rotation translation to the 3D point W, everything then is standard. And then now we can have a representa representation of the local motion DW using the rotation and translation uh, of the global 3D rotation translations. And now we have a plane constraint on the local 3D motion. And we, we can also represent this, uh, this local motion using the global uh, motion in a differential form. And by combining those two, we can then derive a linear constraint on the global 3D motion. And this, and this is, I call it point to plane correspondence model. And this is only a constraint from one observation if we com combine all the observations we, we can uh, have, have from, from different structures. And we can build a system linear equations and solve the 3D motion uh, directly out of the local uh, 2D, tra 2D motions or 2D observations. Let's shortly I'll summarize this part. Um, I propose this, I introduce you here the point to plane correspondence model. It focuses on apparent contours and edges and uh, it takes the 2D observation as input and it also co incorporates the 3D unobservable motion and then by doing that it gives us a plane constraint on the local motion and under small motion constraint we can uh, derive a linear constraint directly to the, to the global 3D motion. And by combining all the 2D observations, then we can have a direct computation of the 3D motion out of it. And this uh, pre-PC model is actually uh, de uh, derived for patient motion compensation. I will extend it also to the uh, registration framework. And this registration framework uh, allows us to, to establish an accurate initial registration as well as real-time motion compensation. So now I'm going to show you the um, pipeline, the registration pipeline. So it starts with a, a initialization in 3D by identifying the, 3D, uh, the uh, structure of interest. And then the registration iterates around this PPC model to fill in the, P the input and uh, solve the, the PPC model uh, by following the following steps, geometry update, forward projection, 3D to 2D matching, and motion estimation. I'll go uh, step by step um, to, uh, through the pipeline. Um, in the initialization step, the structure of interest is identified. So basically saying what we are going trying to align. And those should be the structures that are firstly rigid and have enough contrast in both 2D and 3D images. For example, bone structures um, is suited for this purpose. And then the surface points of the, uh, the, the, stru uh, the structure of interest is extracted and later we use them as a candidate of apparent contour points. After uh, the initialization, the registration starts with, uh, to iterate uh, to beginning with the geometry update. And this is about transforming the 3D um, to according to the projection geometry. It can either be a rough uh, in alignment or a registration update from the last or uh, previous iterations. And by doing that, we can transform the, uh, the apparent contour points in 3D and their gre 3D gradient accordingly such that we can get an um, input for the PPC model. And after that, we can forward project these 3D points, uh, the contour points in the projection plane and also get uh, this normalized projection P for the PPC model and then uh, we also pro project the volume gradient onto the, on this looks like this, the, um, onto the projection image and to uh, minimize the structure overlap, overlap into from different depths. So what I did is to uh, independently uh, project the gradient from, for different depth intervals. And those images uh, uh, carries the appearance uh, information of the 3D structure in this projection plane and it allows us to later identify the local misalignment by using, by comparing to the X-ray gradient image. And the local misalignment is identified by performing 3D to 2D matching. So namely, th uh, this is the yellow contour is the 3D imaging image and the, in the background is the X-ray image. 
and the patch matching is perf um, performed only along the perpendicular direction of the contour or saying it's along the gradient mode, uh, the, the image gradient. And we use the gradient correlation to, to calcul uh, calculate the similarity, uh, similarity of the image patches and take the position with the maximum uh, gradient correlation as, uh, as, a, as the correspondence and take the, the vector in between as the misalignment, as the local misalignment. And this gave, gave us also the, uh, the 2D observation uh, for the PPC model. And now we can see that we have now everything for the PPC model and by putting uh, different observations or, or different local misalignments, we can again set up this system linear equations and we can solve this uh, sys uh, linear equation, uh, uh, system linear equations by using an iterative derivative least square uh, scheme to enhance the robust robustness of the, the motion estimation. So now we, um, I showed you all the steps in the registration pipeline. So it starts with the 3D uh, initialization by identifying the structure of interest and extracting the surface points. And then it iterates from each geometry update and then the contour points are projected and grid image gradient are also forward projected. And then the local uh, misalignment is identified by 3D to 2D matching using the gradient correlation after by having all the uh, lo local observations or misalignment, we can estimate the motion here. So what I want to point it out is here the, in the initialization, there's no 2D image involved. This is only about 3D information. And the 2D image can be dynamically uh, updated in the e registration iteration. It means that um, for it, the, the image can, all be, uh, can be set in the beginning of the iteration together with the geometry. And for the initial registration scenario, the image only is only set up once in the first iteration. And for the dynamic reg registration scenario, the image, the latest acquired 2D image is always updated in the registration iteration so, it, so that we can achieve a dynamic uh, registration. Now I would like to show you some evaluations and results. Um, you have already seen this slide uh, addressing the challenges for ap the intervention applications. I want to show the results, uh, results um, um, addressing these challenges. To address the uh, time constraint problem, um, I will show you how the PPC-based re registration efficiently converges and how it performs to, for the motion compensation scenario. So here we have two examples uh, showing the intermediate step of the registration. And uh, we see that for the Sarx phantom and, and head, head phantom phantoms, the 3D motion can be efficiently estimated both in-plane and out-of-plane rotation, uh, out-of-plane mo mo transformation. And there we only need four iterations and seven iterations to get to the uh, accurate overlay. And this is very efficient uh, comparing to the other, uh, like uh, some of the conventional methods, which takes hundreds of iterations. Um, this is really uh, amazing. Um, and if we look at this convergence rate to plots, meaning that the, the reduction of the 3D registration error along the iteration, um, this reflects the uh, efficient uh, convergence of the registration. And as maybe you uh, still remember that just now I showed you this point-to-point -point correspondence model in the, uh, this is a perspective endpoint uh, problem in the computer vision. If we solve uh, this registration problem using this model, the convergence looks like this. And that uh, t tells us the efficiency comes from the plane the constraint that we also consider the unobservable motion. And for motion compensation scenario, we perform only one e registration iteration per image. And here we see um, that the 3D motion is um, corrected, updated, uh, compensated here. And by using the uh, uh, GPU uh, par parallelization, we achieve a runtime average runtime of 86 sec, uh, milliseconds per iteration. And that means uh, an average 11.6 iterations per second. And considering that usually the fl fluoroscopy, uh, fluoroscopy frame rate is not higher than 10 
uh, frame, uh, frame rate, fra frames per second. This is also, um, that's why we say it uh, can re a re reach in a real time motion compensation. <coughs> and the second one is uh, content mismatch. So here we, we have a video showing a fluoroscopic image uh, take acquired during the injection of the contrast material, introducing the content mismatch. We initialize and perform the registration independently for each image frame. And then, uh, because there's no patient motion, we can see that the results is very, uh, is the same for all the frames. And the next example, I take an, a public uh, cerebral angiogram data set. So there, the 3D volume is a, a digital subtraction angiography uh, and shortened as SDSA. And there's uh, the only the contrast vessel, vessel tree is contained. And in the 2D image, there's a, it's a normal x-ray with the contrast ma ma material and it has vessel and bones. And this bone structure introduces a, contrast, uh, a content mismatch. And I take a bit baseline. This, this is a hybrid method using both feature-based and gradient-based uh, based methods. And we can see that the PPC-based registration significantly improves the success rate of the uh, registration from both AP and lateral views here. And uh, about single view, guide, single, single view guidance, before I show, show you the last evaluation, I just want to say that all the evaluation you have seen is based on single view. And the last one is about on the synthetic data. And the good thing about using synthetic data is that we know exactly the ground truth and we can assess the accuracy in an um, ideal condition. And then I, as the evaluation metric, I take the mean target, target registration error, and this is measured in 3D space and reflects the actual uh, accuracy of the registra registration. And the, space, the baseline also take uh, back projection gradient-based method. Um, then we can see the results that the, the error is significantly re reduced comparing um, to the baseline, and what, we, uh, what is amazing is that for this, uh, the first and third image, we achieve an accuracy uh, to the second digit of after the uh, decimal point. And this very small um, uh, standard deviation shows us the um, con uh, consistency of the registration uh, algorithm. Now I would like to summarize my talk. Um, it, this, uh, I f I, this talk is about the 2D 3D registration uh, of image fusion where accuracy is a very important factor. And I will propose an a, a registration, registration algorithm that uh, enables both initial registration and motion compensation. And from the motion compensation point of view, I pr propose the point to plane correspondence model that focuses on uh, uh, co apparent contours and edges. And by incorporating both the 2D observations and 3D unobservable motions, um, this gives us a plane constraint to the 3D local motion. And by considering the small motion assumption, um, we can derive this plane constraint as a linear constraint directly, directly as to the 3D global motion. And by combining all the observations, we can compute the 3D motion out of the 2D tracking. And then I uh, extended the PPC model as a dynamic registration framework. And this, this uh, makes the registration updates problem as a direct, direct computation uh, out of local misalignment. And this is very accurate even using single view X-ray images. And it co convergence also very efficiently. And by using the uh, graphical op uh, uh, cards, uh, we can also achieve a real-time mo motion compensation. And this is also robust against uh, content mismatch uh, comparing to the state of art. And it can be generally uh, applied for different procedures as soon as the structure of interest is rigid and have enough contrast in both 2D and 3D images. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention and um, also wish you uh, happy and successful, beautiful, magical New Year 2020. Thank you.